Boys and girls, this is the Undisputed Era. Adam Cole, Kylo Riley, Roderick Strong, and you're listening to Going In Raw, baby. This is Shayna Baszler, and you're watching Going In Raw. This is the knockout artist, Cassius Ono, and you're going in raw. Hey, friendo, Steve here. And Larson. And welcome back to Going In Raw, the only pro wrestling podcast you need to be listening to right here at youtube.com forward slash Steve and Larson. We're also available on the Patreon at patreon.com forward slash Steve and Larson. We have a variety of reward tiers over there. And just a reminder, even $1 goes a long way to help going in raw on the Patreon, patreon.com forward slash Steve and Larson. We do have a couple of new patrons. Oh. And even at $1, you get a shout out right here on the show. Connor Sprickman, Jesse Lucas, Alex Crandall, and Matt Broadhurst. Thank you all. Uh, welcome. Uh, of course, at the $5 a month mark, you get bonus episodes, five of them a week. It's a lot of fun. We do some chat trivia. We do. We, we do, do some movie talk. We do. We, we do. do the award-winning Ask Steve and Larson. I don't really want any awards, though. In my heart, Let's it won award for a show that I like doing most. Because be after ourselves. a long week of talking wrestling, we don't talk any wrestling in that it's one. A, it's a good palate cleanser. Mm-hmm. Well, we got to do that today since we're not coming to the office That tomorrow. is correct. Yeah, we're not doing any live streams tomorrow. I'm getting my water heater installed. Yeah, you need a water heater? Yeah. Put one in for you. Why, thank you. Thank that's you. How, that's how commerce, capitalism works. <laughs> exactly. You pay for goods or service, services in this case, and goods are provided to you. All right, Larson. What? Big, big deal on the horizon. It's been confirmed by the StarCast 2 app right now on your phone. You can get this info, so we feel free to announce it. Friendo Fest 2019 will be taking place on the podcast movement stage. In the Tuscany in Las Vegas. Tuscany Casino in Suisse, Las Vegas. You forgot the most important part. It's double or nothing weekend. We're talking Sunday. It's Friendo Fest weekend, Larson. Monday. Sorry. Sunday. Sunday. Sunday, May 26th, 11 a.m. As you mentioned, <laughs> podcast movement stage. Tuscany Casinos are sweets. There's a, a screening of the Bruiser Brody Dark Side of the Ring. <laughs> That's great. You, you can, can see that right now you can on YouTube. Watch that right now. Yeah. Instead, come say hi to us. Yeah. There's the Bruiser Brody one, and then I think prior to that is the Montreal Screwjob one. You can see them right now. Again, Just they're both great. Them. They're both great. You don't great. need to watch them in a large setting with a bunch of people. Come over to the podcast movement room stage. Yeah. At the Tuscany. You got that right. Sunday morning, double or nothing weekend, 11 a.m. Friendo Fest 2019. Uh, it's, it's just going to be like a live podcast. But, uh, uh, in my mind, it's going to be an extravaganza. Oh, man. You guys want to get up here on the stage with us? Well, I'm not promising that. And Well, you'll have an opportunity to, maybe, if you like raise your hand faster than anybody else. Who wants to come up here and do? I'm saying right now we do chat trivia. One person, bet- the, the friendo between us, and then whoever does. It's a beat the clock challenge. Mm. I don't know. I'm just throwing, like here's the thing I'm is, just throwing phrases like, out right now. Like, are we going to make, like, uh, uh, make up our own clues for, like, ten people? Uh, I don't know. We have plenty of time. We're going to have an eight-hour drive. Yeah. Yeah. We'll have plenty of time. We got I'm not month. saying ten people. It's like five at most. we, we got three weeks to work. I'm not bringing ten people up there. Hopefully, we'll have some special guests. I, no, I listen, think that'd be great. The entire thing needs to be, to be put together during the eight-hour drive to Las Vegas. All right. That's just way, we'll format way too much thing. time to be in a car. Yeah, with each other, that's for sure. Exactly. So we're going to do, that morning we're going to do our Double or Nothing review. Mm-hmm. Uh, so we're going to do that live, and then we'll do some, we'll have some fun stuff with the, with the crowd too. I might have a bone to pick with you. Oh, crap. So uh, as far as the W Steve W fun wrestling uploads. Yeah, what about it? See, you got a smirk coming across your face. You know what I'm, I'm going to talk about. I was about. curious to see what time you were going to schedule yours. Why didn't you go 345? That was silly not Because to. I'm not an asshole. Oh, man. The, the dude... What Here's is, the this thing is we're business. supposed to be doing on different days anyway. I know, I was supposed to do it on Wednesday. That was what was agreed upon. Yeah, well, I did it close to Wednesday. It was 4 a.m. It was only four hours past Wednesday. Why don't you do it at midnight? Because uh, he's t- watching. All right. So, Not my problem. <laughs> look, man, I'm just going to do my thing. I'll give you license to schedule whenever you want to schedule during the week, and no, you give no, me no, license no, 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 to no, do no, the no, same. No. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. We had an arrangement, or so I thought. Yeah, and... Uh, uh, if you want to fight dirty, all right, fine. Can let's, you bring? Let's see, baby's episode just magically disappears off YouTube. Then, 
bring out the contract that said I was going to do that. It was all handshake. <laughs> exactly. And you don't even shake my hand. Get out of here with that. that. Been. Get out of here with that. Besides, you're look, man. You've got you're you're building your long term stories. Exactly. You got a no. I think you got a notification this morning. Uh, is live. Let's see here. YouTube. God, did they even give you a notice? They didn't even give you a notification. Yeah, that seems to be the case. Oh my God, that's so. I, I honest, dude. I, yeah, wow. It's twice now it's happened. Wow. I figured even an hour. Like I was like, he'll probably schedule his at five. But I, honest to God, I was hoping you saw mine I at did. four. And would have scheduled for three forty-five. No, I don't, I don't. I don't play dirty like that. Come on, man. The the, the competition is on and cracking. I don't play right dirty now. like that, man. Look, did you see my thumbnail? It's amazing. Though. Yeah, your thumbnail is good. It doesn't matter. I still would have won. You know, it's funny. I went with Mechos because when Mechos made his debut in the In Your House tournament, yeah, we did that. Yeah, that video got a ton of views. Oh, I don't know why. It, yeah. it almost got ten thousand views. Oh my gosh! Like people like Mechos. I'll give this a try again. Yeah, it probably won't work out this time. But I thought it was worth a try. Probably a weird algorithm thing. Could be. Yeah. Anyways, so yeah, uh, that's going to be a lot of fun. The podcast movement stage, uh, WCW new fun wrestling up as well. Uh, of course, I have my own shop friend at workshop trying to pay for that water, water heater. heater. Yeah. Whenever I need an extra infusion of cash, I just bust out something from my garage what, and I sell uh, it. What percentage of your water heater have you paid for? You don't want to divulge that information. Uh, I'm coming up on a third of it. All right. Yeah, it's I'm coming terrible. up on a third of it. So, no, and thanks to everybody. Friendoworkshop.com. Go buy my shit. Uh, so, yeah, let's move on. Watch Fun Wrestling first. Time. Oh, cool. WCW is monetized, too, because last night it was not monetized. Oh. You know, I feel like we should... Uh, the, the, the true metric of who wins this mm. battle between fun and WCW is really the only metric that matters. Which show makes the most money? Yeah, that's kind of a hard thing to measure, though. No, the the the, the data is right there. Mm, kind of difficult. You know, we don't really know. No, we know exactly how much. What? Like, I mean, what percentage of those people watching WCW because I put a friend of workshop at it <laughs> are going to come over to my shop and, and spend money? Then that's money, my you know. That's not related to W. Steve W. Right. Yeah, but it's on the ad is on W. Steve W. Yeah, they're leaving thing. W. Steve W. to go thing of consequence. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> From your workshop. Not if they really care that much to sit through W. Steve W. They would they say, oh, okay, cool. There's a thing there. I'll do that after I'm finished watching. Yeah. The fact that they leave. Yeah, but here's the your thing. show to go to your 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 big cartel store. Means easy way to they make really it, don't care about easy w, way w. easy way for me to get the to win the money war is just make a three make weekly three hour episodes of W. Steve W. Yeah, you're not gonna do that. I go very quickly. I'm like 25 minutes. I'm out. Yeah. I'm brutal. Cutting you're matches. Gonna, you're not gonna do weekly three hour episodes. No, I'm not. I don't even like doing weekly 25 minute episodes. I'm about to go monthly, baby. Anyways, uh, NXT UK and 205. What do you think this week? Good stuff? Yeah, there's Bad some stuff. good stuff there. Yeah. That Walter Devlin match was something else. Dale gas, dale gas. Man, further evidence that Jordan Devlin's pretty much the best. I thought that the match was going to be match of the week, and then Kushida Ono came along. I got to give. I thought it was like sort of a tie. I got to give a shout out to Mansoor. That dude did double duty. And he put on two really good performances. And what you probably would think would be squash matches. Okay, yeah, dude, that's that was my problem with the Dijakovic match. Dijakovic, which one is it? Dijakovic. Why? Why did Mansoor put up a fight against that guy? I think they think highly of him. Oh man, I don't know. He's the guy that Shayna Baszler put to sleep. Yeah, I know. I can't get that out of my head. Every time I see him, I just see, oh, it's the goof who got put to sleep by Shayna Baszler. <laughs> that's all I think. I don't know, man. Mansoor. He's local though. He's from Northern California, I think. Yeah, I know. Or at least he wrestled around here a lot. Yeah, so did Adam Mayhem. Uh, yeah, Dijakovic. He should have swiped the floor with that guy. He's that's about to be in a North American happen. title that's match. That's what I thought was going to happen. I, I actually, here's the thing. Dale gas. I'm kind of tired of squash matches. No, no. I me. think uh, if you really want to showcase someone's uh, abilities, you put them in a competitive match. See, with the Travis Banks match, I thought it made sense for him to put up a good fight because they're kind of evenly matched in terms of size and stuff like that. But Dijakovic, I don't know if they have plans for the guy. He's probably going to lose. He's not going to win that North no. American title. No. But he's going to have a takeover match with Dream. Probably. At whatever I feel mystery, like, I feel like I get a mystery much, vortex takeover. Yeah, we know it's June 1st. Yeah. <laughs> but I feel like we get a better sense of what uh, Dijakovic can do now because he actually had a competitive match against somebody. I know he, he can go in and drop someone with a kick. Yeah. Hit him with uh, Feast Your Eyes. Yeah. I'm not impressed by that. Show me a good competitive match that shows full breadth of your abilities and I'll be impressed. Yeah. I know. In this whatever case, that Keith Lee match. They had some creative changes they were doing. Yeah, that was weird. 
So that I don't know. I'm just kind of tired of squash matches. I've de- I've decided that I'm tired of squash matches. This is interesting. Cody Miles is literally schooling us on YouTube right now. Huh. He said, when uploading on YouTube, it only sends out notifications for the first two videos in 24 hours. I didn't know that was true. Did you know that? Were you aware of this? We've been in YouTube Wait, for like first, 10 years now. But still, now. the first two videos in 24 hours, that should be WCW and Fun Wrestling. I don't think it, I'm assuming it doesn't reset at the, at the midnight mark, is what he's saying. Because we already, we had the SmackDown video. We had two SmackDown videos. And when does it reset? I don't know. A rolling 24 hours? I don't know, man. YouTube's a mess. And then Cody Miles just threw some more weirdness onto it. Why does it have to be more complicated than it needs to be? I so, mean, like, if you subscribe to a channel, you should get notifications. They post a new video. There shouldn't be a bell associated with it. That's my feeling. Yeah. And if the point of subscribing is get notifications when new videos put up, then they should get a notification when new videos put up, especially if they hit that bell. That's the whole point of hitting the bell, to get notifications when a new video goes up. Whoa. Flash anger. Here's a replacement pen. Don't throw that one, please. No, don't throw it. I'm in the wood now. So you guys can watch this live you on the Tuscany podcast movement stage. Larson having a temper tantrum. And then you can go with us to go play some roulette or maybe go to scores if you're of age. First up. Well, either way, you have to be of age. Uh, NXT. Uh, and they're really not impressive tag division. Um Lorcan and Birch. I like them, but I just feel like they're going to be on the way out because only Lorcan is on 205. Or is he still just going to well, be Well, they've always tag? been booked on NXT like a mid-card tag team anyways. Yeah, right. No they, matter how much that's all they have. Work. And by the way, we can't get into spoilers for NXT. Please, anybody in the live chat or in the YouTube comments, don't go there. Can't go there. Can't talk about I don't want, that. I'm not going to talk about results, but there's like one thing I want to say that could change what you just mentioned. If they had done something at those tapings. Don't even. I'm not do, going to. Yeah, I know. I agree 100%. I if told had, Karen this last if night. they had done I agree 130%. Thing. We'll get to it when we get to it. We can't talk about it. But you're right. You're absolutely right. You're right a million times over. I don't get it. It's weird. But stop now. Lorcan and Birch and Carrillo. Dale gas. Dale gas. I love Umberto. Oh, he's good. He's oh real my. good. I love seeing him twice a week. Versus do unto others. <laughs> The Forgotten Sons. I'm really coming around to that Jackson Riker guy. Yeah, he's great. He's massive. <laughs> he's I feel leather. Like he's pure he's leather. Leathery. I feel like the the circumference of one quadricep on him yeah. is like the circumference of my waist. Yeah, right. Yeah. So he's got like 32 inch quads. Trunks. They're massive. Trunks. Massive. Tree trunks. I don't know if I've ever seen anybody with uh, with quads that massive. Big quads. Big strong um, boy. I feel like each week he's getting better. He's channeling his inner Terminator. That's mm-hmm. what Triple H told him to do. Man, Forgotten Sons are going to have all those belts at some point. I don't like the other two. I want them to split up, have him just take on uh, not Buddy Murphy and then uh, Cutler, and yeah. W.O. Larson. Yeah. Uh, like, he just decimates them on a weekly basis in uh-huh. handicap action, tornado handicap action. Yeah, yeah. It'd be like one of I just, yeah. <laughs> It'd be like one of them skate videos where, like, they get into fight, fights with, like, uh, security guards. Yeah. But there's like multiple security guards versus skater Jackson Riker. That's yeah. what I want. Yeah, that's what you want to see. He destroys. Where he just whoops on him. Yeah. Uh, anyway, this is a fun match. No, it was great because Umberto Carrillo's in it. Yeah, this is the one towards the end it was because the uh, team Carrillo, Lorcan Birch to lose is, is Carrillo goes for a suicide dive and then Jackson Riker mm-hmm. pushes his teammates out of the way. So Carrillo ends up hitting a suicide dive on Oni Lorcan. <laughs> and then so uh, uh, Danny Birch isolated in the ring. Um, I'm supposed to say Birch, not Lorcan for the finish. Um, and then uh, they, uh, the Forgotten Sons, get uh, Humberto out of the picture for a little bit. Hit their finish. They hit their finish twice on uh, on both Creo and uh, in in Birch. Yeah, that was cool. Yeah. And then Birch ate the pin. Mm-hmm. Wesley Blake pinned him. Mm-hmm. Forgotten Sons go over. Yeah. Both strong. Do unto others. <laughs> 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 Where's their shirt? Do they have a merch shirt yet? Do unto others. Pew. And then there's like probably some manifesto on the back. That well, doesn't, it's all, it doesn't make That would be the sense. only manifesto they've issued that. <laughs> Here's the thing. What? Their Titan Tron's terrible. Yeah, they're terrible, except for Jackson Riker. I'll say this, though. To a certain degree, I kind of like some of the design aspects of their gear. Like the giant marine flag on Cutler's. 
Oh, I think a bit much. But I, like how they have their name and it's yeah. all like weathered and kind of yeah disappearing almost. I really, I actually really, actually like, really like that. I like uh, Jackson Riker's trunks. I yeah, think I think those look really good. Yeah, and look I, really I like good. one half of Cutler's pants with the side with his name on it. Okay, not that I have any issue with Marine Corps. I don't, but yeah. just the fact that it's a giant logo. Yeah, it's not. It's just he I mean, it could have been in, in, you know involved in the more creative fashion. Yeah, they just look like the other two just look like goof magoofs. Like standing next to Jackson Riker, who looks like. Oh, I mean, he looks like he was chisels from stone, yeah. Yeah, and they're like softies. Not Buddy Murphy, super soft. <coughs> he's like Wesley borderline. Blake. He's like borderline Steve soft. Yeah, he's he's soft. I just think if they I understand, they all they're all I guess supposed to be former uh, military. Yeah, and I appreciate the fact that they've incorporated the logos, whatever branch of the military. So not Buddy in. Murphy's hanging out at the VFW, just soaking down some beers. Maybe. Yeah, well, let me finish my thought first, please, and then you okay. can make your joke. Sorry. I just kind of wish they had found a, a more creative way of, of working the logos into their, their gear, so I think the rest of their gear looks pretty good. Yeah. yeah. Anyways, now you can crack wise about Wesley Blake. I already did it. Efficiency. Sucking down some natty ices. <laughs> Watching NASCAR. Mm-hmm. That's, why, that's what I feel like they At watch the VFW. at the VFW, yeah. The Veterans Hall. Uh, after that, we had a Shayna Baszler interview. She was walking with... Uh, Jessamyn Duke, Marina Shafir. Marina Shafir. Jessamyn Duke sale. has a, like a, a unique look to her. Mm-hmm. Marina Shafir would blend in with any crowd. That's why I'm not, I don't really think, I'm not sure how far she's going to go or even how far she's going to want to go. Yeah. Um, but Jessamyn Duke, I think, has a, has a really unique look to her. Yeah. She's tall, lanky, and she looks like a bad guy. You yeah, know? she does. Uh, and then Shane is great. Uh, and she even like broke a microphone in this segment. Yeah, she uh, hit it out of Kathy Kelly. Kathy hand. Kelly was asking her, "Hey, you know, uh, <clears throat> you've never pinned Dio or Eos pinned you or whatever it was." Yeah, Eos the only like one of only two people to ever pin her. Yeah, and that and that made her mad. That made her mad, and she stomped off with her hench women. Mm-hmm. Uh, after that, this is my segment of the week in terms of backstage segments. Me, Em, and Bianca Belair were at the PC. Oh, because Stokely Hathaway is back there. World starring it with his phone out. World star. That was great. That was hilarious. So yeah, uh, it was just a little kerfuffle, uh, a verbal uh, sparring between me and, and yeah. Bianca Belair at the PC. Yeah. yeah, sort of a fly in the wall type thing. Uh, yeah, because the camera crew ran in only to a point uh, where they can like literally just photograph what was, was going a, on. It was a bit on the TMZ side, but yeah, yeah it, was, it was it was you know a, a, a pretty wide shot. The argument. Stokely doing a whole lot of nothing. Oh, man. He's on his phone. He was documenting it. That's for posterity, man. When he sees that there's some some heat going on, he gets off the apron. He was just sitting on the other apron. Yeah. And he's like a big smile on his face. I can't wait till he debuts on TV. Oh, hell yeah, man. That's going to be great. It's going to be great. Uh, Next, uh, Mansoor taking on Dominic Dijakovic. This is a really fun match because, again, we got to see the full breadth of what die jack can do yeah uh also i like i like when he gets <laughs> i i have a really hard time taking him serious yeah me too he's goofy he is and he seems to really take himself seriously even like the feast your eyes catchphrase is pretty corny and he is so over the top when he, he has like the he has like an underbite a little bit he looks like phil hartman doing frankenstein <laughs> Velveteen dream bad yeah you know that kind of stuff yeah and then even when he gets in the ring and he like brings his hands over here and launches him over the ropes, he it looks like it's effort. It's way too much effort. Here's the thing. Drew McIntyre can show uh, intensity and menace doing the smallest little things. Yeah. And I feel like Dijakovic <laughs> feels like he has to do the largest things <laughs> yes, to, to show off that is such even a, good, a fraction of that, that level of intensity. That's a really good way of putting like it. Like he really wants the people to understand that he's very intense. He is very, yeah, yeah. So he he goes overboard and showing everybody just how intense he is. So like you know, there's resting, there's resting B face is like mm-hmm. they like the resting mm-hmm. mad face, whatever mm-hmm. you want to call it. He has resting about to laugh face. He always looks like, and then it didn't help that when Velveteen Dream came out after yeah. his match, yeah. it just made me remember their match when uh, Dijak died, whatever Dijakovic was like giggling through most of it. Yeah, I mean it's hard not to. Yeah. But he's just especially when Velveteen's doing his uh, national an- or national anthem. Yeah, but no, I, it made me remember their last match. Yeah, where he was laughing. The he was literally time. giggling yeah, the whole time. I know. Anyways, uh, there's this great spot where where Dijakovic catches Mansoor and just throws him out of the ring. Mm-hmm, yeah, completely out of the ring. Yeah, that was pretty impressive. But anyways, he, and ultimately gets the win with Feast. Yeah, Feast. feast. This is Feast. Feast. 
Oh, your. Is it this? It's like this. This? And then he your? Goes, no, he doesn't point. Right. He goes, feast your feast. eyes. <laughs> I thought it used to be feast your eyes, but last night he just did feast your, your eyes. Because it makes sense. I mean, it should be feast yeah. your eyes. Feast yes. your oh Uh So, yeah, after the match, uh, Velveteen Dream comes out on his... Uh, couch, couch chase lounge his chase lounge with wheels and women pushing it mm-hmm. and then he gets up and on the tron he's got a sing-along for the na- the star singled banner with velveteen dream lyrics his own remix of it's it pretty funny yeah it was it was a really good bit Dijak- Dijako- whatever Dijakovic. he was just had like a look on his face Mm. He's like, what? Do I get a North American title shot now? <laughs> like, <laughs> Velveteen Dream just presented the opportunity to him, and he's like, wait, do I get this? Now? Do I get title shot or no? <laughs> After this, this was great. I've never seen an undisputed era promo break down of its own volition. The only, the only thing that was missing from this promo was a record scratch. Because even the music stopped. It did. That's why I mentioned it. It totally stopped. So it's the usual thing where they're talking trash, and then Adam Cole says something like, yeah, but uh, we'll have better luck this week than last week when Roddy couldn't get the job done. <laughs> and Roddy's is instantly like, Whoa, WTF? Hold on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what? What are you talking about? It was a joke. Where are you going? <laughs> and both Bobby Fish, Color Riley, is like, it's not that funny. He's like, dude, your timing is off, man. I know it's a joke. It's just a joke. And then Bob Fish is like, yeah, but you're the time. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go after a Yeah. And then Kyle O'Reilly's like, what are you that funny of a joke? And they both put their hands up into relaxed position like <laughs> I this. I know. He's like, oh, man, yeah, I don't know, man. It's just a joke. So, uh, yeah. And, the, of course, their music had been playing music stop. It was pretty good. It was, it was all good stuff. Yeah, that was awesome. <clears throat> anyway, even, even, in, even with tension and dissent in the group, they're still, still wildly entertaining. You yeah. Know. Then we had our main event. They gave this about 17, 15 to 17 minutes. Cassius Ono versus the debuting Ugoo Kushida. Whoa. Oh, Roddy dropped the ball. That's what he said. Roddy dropped the ball. That's right. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, yeah, Cassius Ono versus Kushida. Uh, we all knew this is going to be a wildly entertaining match. Yeah. Cassius Ono doesn't put on matches that aren't wildly entertaining. Uh-huh. And uh, Kushida's uh, great. So uh, I thought Ono was going to give us a, a Rubik's Cube at one point. I know. Instead, he just dropped Kushida right on his nose, yeah. and then you see blood pour out of it. It was bleeding before that. Oh, was he? I thought yeah, it was the, on the, the drop. No, okay. the ref, ref was putting gloves on before that. Oh, okay. I think it was one, it was one of the boots to the head. Ah. And that's my suspicion. Boy, when he when he landed, though, they went for that cut, that uh, close-up, and it started There was pouring. two great instances of, of blood. That, and then I thought Walter bleeding in the main event oh, of NXT my UK gosh. did wonders for Jordan it Devlin. It did. It, it did really did. Wonders yeah. for him. Yeah, I wonder. I wonder how close to their. I wonder how close that match was to their OTT match that went yeah, the other know. way. It wouldn't surprise me if it, if it was sort of similar. I thought there was one part. I don't know. Do you remember how Walter lost at OTT? Do you remember what the finish mm-hmm. was? I don't know if it was a tap out or if it was a pin. I would suspect it's a pin. I thought there was one moment I was like, "Oh my god!" I wonder if that's like the finishing sequence, the OTT mm-hmm. match where they had Walter mm-hmm. kick out or not mm-hmm. tap order. Anyways, uh, yeah. So um, no, it was it was a fantastic match. Of course, Ono tapped out to the hoverboard lock. Yeah, it was really good. Mm-hmm. He got a cool. What'd you think of? I didn't really get a chance to digest it that much, uh, but they debuted obviously Kushida's music. Yeah, it was all right. I mean, it's not as iconic as some of the CFO dollar sign themes no, that we've heard. It's, it's, but it's, it's probably going to grow. Orchestral. Yeah. I feel like it had strings with a steady beat to it. Yeah. Like I liked the beginning of it because I thought, oh, this is pretty cinematic, and they mm-hmm. got you know kind of the Back to the Future type stuff. And then it kicked in. I was like, okay, this is going somewhere. And then they just brought back the. They should have done an the NWO theme. They should have done an NWO version of Power of Love. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Dun, 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 dun. Yeah. Dun, 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 dun. Power of Love. It's curious. Is a Kushida it's thing? It's a Kushida thing. That's bad. Makes one man tap the hoverboard lock. <laughs> hoverboard lock. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, okay. There's a way to get done it. Yeah. Anyways, fun match. Good debut for Kushida. Yeah. I'm looking forward to seeing. So I saw the spoilers. Not going to mention yeah, them, but looking forward to That's some of that great. stuff. That's going to be great. Yeah. NXT UK. Um, First match, Travis Banks versus Mansoor. Were they still in? Yeah, they're still in New York. Yeah, but they had a lot more promos and little video bits to sort of pad it out, which I always like. I always think those are the strongest bits because I love the character That's how stuff. it's been the last two weeks. 
It, I feel like it hasn't been as much as this, though. They had a Zaya Brookside promo, a Nina Samuels promo. We had a vignette for Ilya Dragunov. And Gallus. Gallus had a little short film. I feel like last week it was just half promo stuff. You think it was more I think, last week? I think the thing is, like, this episode was nice and tight. It was about 45 minutes. And plus, he had that terrific main event. And the main event was awesome. Yeah, but last week was good, too. But, yeah, it wasn't close to Devlin versus Walter. Anyways, it kicked off with, yeah, like you said, Travis Banks versus, once again, Mansoor. Another strong showing Pulling from double Mansoor. Duty. Yeah. Uh, but Travis Banks got the win after a slice of heaven and, and a Kiwi Crusher. Yeah, it was a fun match. Really uh-huh. fun. <clears throat> so last week there were five talky bits. There was a Jordan Devlin interview. Yeah. There was Eichner Bartel at Access. There was a Piper Niven interview at Access, and there was James Drake and uh, Zach Gibson. Trash yeah, but and those Lockard. all those were super quick. I feel like the Zaya Brookside promo was long. The Gallus thing was like a freaking short film. Uh, the Ken, so we had a Kenny Williams Mirror Jordan interview that was kind of on the short side, and then a Nina Samuels promo, which is also like very sort of produced as well. Um, so we had, after that, we had the Zaya Brookside promo and it was just sort of, she seems really charming. She's, she's very, very charming. Mm -hmm. Um, and, uh, yeah, it was, it was basically just designed to sort of like, it was honestly, it seemed like it was more outtakes than it was scripted stuff. Uh, because it was just sort of her goofing and introducing, reintroducing her character and, Oh, I'm going to use that loss against Rhea Ripley to come back stronger yeah. and train more. And, uh, I want to, she said something like, I want to invite you guys in to take a look or something like that. So I'm assuming we're going to get just more of these vignettes yeah. over the next yeah. couple of weeks. Yeah. Her character should be a YouTube vlogger. Yeah. Right. Beauty vlogger, makeup tutorial vlogger, or just, you know, vlogger or just PC you, YouTube, performance center YouTube personality vlogger. Uh, next, uh, Ilya Dragunov vignette. I don't know much about this guy. He was wrestling Pentagon Jr. I that. did see that Pentagon Jr. made his NXT UK debut yep. Yep. in this. I in know, I saw that. Clips. Ooh. Oh, who's that guy? Let's sign him. He's not going to want any part of this, dude. He doesn't want any part of your carny promotion, Vince. Uh, really good stuff. Heard uh, really good things about this guy. Yeah, me too. I don't. I've never seen one of his matches. He looks super intense. Yeah, that's his and thing. He's got those contacts in. Yeah, intensity. intensity. More people should wear colored contacts. See, this is like a situation where he's like he knows how to channel intensity properly. Yeah, efficiently. Yeah. Instead of this, <laughs> <laughs> it looks like a big yawning movement. With, I know. With, uh, Dijakovic. Oh, I got to do this match. <laughs> now I got to do match. Somebody help me pull me up. I know. Uh, next, Nina Samuels promo. So she's actress yeah. or producer. Well, it's Nina Samuels show, right? I, mean, I guess it could be like a one woman show, oh. or she's writer, director, star. Yeah, producer. But she talks about how Tony Storm is not a leading lady. Mm. Nina Samuels is leading lady, but does that translate to professional wrestler? Who knows? She said that she's been picking up wins. How many? I mean, she's had like what two? Probably more than that. Three. You think so? It's yeah. been three. She'd be since her little since her oh since the repackage yeah no it'd be two since yeah, repackage she maybe one three overall uh, next Piper Niven taking on uh, Reina Gonzalez what a great matchup yeah because uh, Reina's also bigger and this was a really fun match it was I love I'm not sure why we don't see more of Reina Gonzalez to be honest I know I'll be honest I like Piper Niven I felt like this is a Reina Gonzalez uh, showcase I know. Because she comes out there with that rope mm-hmm. and the bell or whatever it is. Mm-hmm. And she's, man, she has got some, I like her, man. Yeah, she's, she's got some personality. Good. She's real good. She's working over uh, Piper's back. I'll tell you this, though. Piper's got the best fun splash in the business. She does. I'll agree with that. Man. Yeah. That's great stuff. Follows it up with like a cent, like a half senton, half elbow type move. Mm-hmm. That was great. And only gets a two cap, and then she wins with the Mishinoku driver. Yeah, so it was a fun match, really fun. Yeah, no, it was good. And Piper's got all sorts of charisma. There oh, heck is, yeah, like uh, one little bit. While I think she was, uh, she came out first, and while she was waiting for Raina to get to the ring, they cut to her, and she just has a smile on her face. She's looking at somebody in the crowd, so somebody was showing her some love in the crowd, and she just had the most charming look on her mm-hmm. face. You know, mm-hmm. she's great. Mm-hmm. Uh, you mentioned the Kenny Williams Amir Jordan interview. Uh, uh, the next round of tapings, I believe, is in Glasgow. These guys just trying to remember what they were supposed to say. Yeah, I know. And <laughs> Kenny Williams is very excited because he's from yeah. Glasgow. Yeah. And he wants another title shot. Glasgow. Or he wants He wants a title shot. Yeah. And they're talking about uh, Gibson and the other guy, Drake. Drake, yeah. 
they think they're locker room leaders, but then they're like throwing our stuff out of the locker room. We've traveled the same roads, that kind of stuff. All those UK guys have been doing this since they're like eight. I know. <laughs> and everyone's wrestled each other at least two dozen times. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what do you think of this Gallus short film? Oh, it was great, man. They're like, yeah, it's ugly out here because they're also talking about returning to Glasgow, of course, yeah. their home territory. Yeah. And they're sitting out there and they're looking at whatever river that is. And uh, they're like, yeah, it's so ugly out here, but it's ours. It's where we're from because Glasgow is Gallus. Gallus. There is some interesting framing going on here. Did you mm-hmm. notice that at the beginning there was like, you see like Wolfgang and Focus in the background, but the camera's like right here. Yeah. <laughs> On yeah, Joe, yeah, and then like the opposite angle, but it's like at the top of his head, looking down on Mark. Yeah, it was really wonky, but I liked it. I thought it was effective. Yeah, it was experimental. A couple little drone shots here and there. Yeah, some the uh, avant garde. Yeah, vignettes. <laughs> some avant garde. Yeah, there you go. And then the uh, main event was spectacular. Oh boy, Jordan Devlin, the Irish Ace, taking on a Valter. Yeah, my only complaint is that why didn't like I just really think that they should have held off on this match until like. Not the next takeover, because that's going to be the rematch, but the one after that, you know? Just because Jordan Devlin lost doesn't mean he can't get another shot later on, man. You're going to circle back around to him yeah, at some point? storytelling, hopefully. I hope so, because, hopefully. God dang it, he is so good. He is good. I love that bit early on where he was dodging Walter Chops, hit him with two chops of his own, Walter just gets mad. Mm-hmm, I love yeah. that maybe he dares chop Walter, he just gets mad. Yeah. And as much as I like seeing Walter turn people's chest on the hamburgers, I, I, I appreciate the fact that they're using his mighty chops as, sto- as a storytelling yeah, apparatus. Yeah, it's awesome. It's can you, Everybody knows that he will chop the shit out of you. Can you make sure not to get chopped? That's yeah. the point of the match. And yeah. I love it. I it's think great. it's awesome. It's great. Really good. Um, so uh, Devlin uh, eventually gets the upper hand somewhat after going after Walter's leg. Going after what? His vertical, vertical base. base. And it was working for a while. Yeah. Um, uh, but then Walter was able to shake it off. Uh, overpowered Jordan Devlin. This is a great spot where Jor- or, uh, Walter's going for a powerbomb. And Devlin reversed it almost to like a Canadian destroyer powerbomb type thing of his own. Yeah. That was great. That was awesome. Only gets two count. And then eventually, though, Walter just pretty much folds Jordan Devlin in half. Uh, with a power bomb and then lays on top of him. Yeah. Feet in the air to get that pin. I like that. At one point, Devlin had him in like a half crab for a while. Yeah. And you, the camera goes down and you had, no, I'd sort of rewound a bit because I was like, where did all that blood come from? It was all just from his mouth. Yeah. Cause he, he cut something on the instant, probably bit his tongue or something. Bit his tongue or his cheek or something. Yeah. And like a little bit, you see a little bit of blood come out. Ref puts the gloves on and then he's in the half crab like forever. Camera eventually goes back to him and it's like and he, all he over gets his up face. and it's all down his chest. Oh, it's awesome. And he awesome. walks in the match with like some cut. Walter does some cuts on his neck. Yeah. So obviously it had like a match, you know, another physical day bout before or something like a chop fest. Um, so Walter already looks a little beat up. And then just the image of, of, of Walter bleeding. Man, that helped Jordan Devlin look like a million bucks. It did. Man. It really did, yeah. And just his performance in general, like the the storytelling in this mm-hmm. match. Mm-hmm. I mean, it, it went through several different rounds of Devlin having a multi-pronged approach mm-hmm. to beating Walter, mm-hmm. which ultimately didn't win, but, man, it did. It made him look great. Yeah. Yeah, he's really good. Uh, so, anyways, yeah, like you said, Walter uh, won with the powerbomb. Uh, Pete Dunn then comes to the ring, and he says, Give me my rematch! And then Walter just sort of looks at him and goes, okay. "Yeah, no, okay." Wasn't <laughs> well, even that like demonstrative. Just, he just did this. It just no, it was like he sort of like shook his head a little. Yeah, it was, it was, it was it so was, matter of fact. Yeah, it was very understated. Yeah, there was something like there. Yeah, it was like okay, dude, sure, dude. Uh, then we got two hundred five live. Uh, yeah. Okay, this had a good main event. Yeah, the main event was pretty solid. The uh, show opened with a Tony Nese promo. Um, he's champ now. He's champion now. Yeah, I feel like talked he, about his, his history with Drew Gulak a little bit. I get the feeling that even he knows that he's champ. I've mentioned this last week. He just sort of he, the, he. I hope he has that title for a while so he gets comfortable being the champ. Yeah. Because I just feel like he kind of knows that he's champ during a transitionary period. Mm-hmm. And I don't know. Uh, I hope that they just keep on booking him strong. Same. Because that, if that's the case, if, he, if he's champion during a transitionary period, I mean, that's his opportunity to, to really establish himself as top guy. I would like, I mean, I we're going to talk about Leo Rush on tomorrow's show, mm-hmm. on the new show. Mm-hmm. But I'd, I'd like to see Leo back on 205 Live maybe, mm-hmm. you know. I mm-hmm. mean... I don't know. There's there's lots unpacked with, with that Leo Rust stuff. There is, there is. Because I was, I thought that was 
I thought it was a terrific interview mm -hmm. that he gave to Sean Ross. Sapp. Yeah, I know me too. And it, he makes a lot of good points. He does. You know, it's, it's, a, it seems like it's a complex situation for a yes. complex individual. Yeah, it does. And you know, what do we say all the time with news stories is, is it seems like, you know, the people backstage and they all, mm -hmm. a lot of them have agendas mm -hmm. potentially, yeah. yeah, you know, so uh, so anyways, uh, but no, we'll talk about that tomorrow. Yes. 205 Live, Tony Nese cuts a promo, very babyface promo. I'm here to prove that I'm the best. And I've got Drew Gulak later on tonight, and we mm -hmm. go back a ways. Mm -hmm. Drew Gulak then cut a promo, and you mentioned this. We watched this together yesterday here at the office, and you're like, Jesus, he sounds so checked out. I know. And he does, and even his beard looks checked out. He's not maintaining that thing at all. No. He, his hair no. is like poofy. Man, I want to sh I want to have see him walk down the ring and he takes his robe off and he's got like a a lib a bib. Sorry, from Jimmy Seafood underneath. Like he just had a a, a a nice meal backstage. Yeah, with some right. Delicious crab cakes. Yeah, he's a bit gassy during the match. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> like me after any time we do a show after lunch. <laughs> You're trying to burp. Excuse me. Oh, sorry. <laughs> well, what do I care? He's like, I'm not a high flyer. Uh, better two or five. Flyer. Apparently, I'm not a priority on the show. <laughs> oh but man. man, is that Jimmy seafood delicious? It's so good. Anyways, Anyways uh, like pretty much every every episode of Two O Five Live these days, <laughs> in ring action kicked off with a Lucha House Party. I'm not complaining. No, I love them. They're great. Uh, Lince Dorado and Grand Metalik taking on the returning Singh Brothers. Oh man, why didn't they rebrand re them again? Debrand them into the Bollywood, Bollywood boys. boys. They were Arvind they were Gerv just Shira. doing that. Yeah, they were just doing I that. Know. They were doing the. I love the Bollywood dance. Oh, same. Stuff. Yeah, it's great. That's awesome. And the Singh brothers did a promo on the way down the ring, saying while well, on the main roster they've uh, taken on Randall Orton, mm -hmm. pretty much everybody that uh, Ginger's had a feud with. Yeah. Says, well, we're back. We haven't been here since the very first episode. All commentary said that. I guess they haven't returned. Uh, they haven't been on two hundred five live since the very first episode. They're back. Mm -hmm. uh, and then they lost. Um, Sunil took the pin after a Lince Dorado shooting star press. What was it last night? They made like at least two references to the first episode of 205. Like Tony Nese made a reference to it saying, uh, you know, I've been here since the very first episode holding it down. Brian Kendrick, when he came out. They, they made a reference. Like, he made a vented it too. Yeah. They were doing a bunch of references to the very first episode. You think there's some... Uh... <laughs> oh, dude, we forgot to mention... They crammed like 80 people in at commentary. So oh, yeah. Nigel came back and they didn't get rid of, of Otunga, who was a chatty Kathy, man. He was a chatty Kathy. You know, and last week I, I, I said, you know, Otunga, I, th I didn't think he was that bad. I thought he made a couple good points. Yeah. And I, it might just be because I really wasn't paying that close attention last week's commentary. Uh, yeah, there's a couple stumbles. There was, and he, he talked a lot. He did talk a lot. Man. Let just can we can it just be Nigel? Here's the thing, like it's I and Vic. Yeah, and, and if Nigel's there, I don't mind in English so much because he's still learning. And at least if he's going to get on the job experience, you have Nigel right there, and he's excellent. Yeah, he's like the best. excellent. But then if you have, I know Otunga's been doing commentary for years, but I feel like he's at the same level of Aiden English. <laughs> He's like he's not as good as Aiden, man. And I'm not. I think Aiden has probably a couple of years left to really get to any decent point. Mm -hmm. You know, like when you hear Aiden English and, and Otunga go back and forth, it's hard. It's not easy. Here's the thing: is, is I don't know if anybody is better right now than Nigel McGuinness as far as advancing <laughs> the story of what's going on the ring so good. from a technical wrestling oh, sense. Oh, I know he's so good. No one else does it like him. Absolutely nobody. Nigel can be literally color commentary, heel commentator, and play-by-play -play yeah. all in one. Yeah, yeah. Um, no, as far as the technical aspects of wrestling, no one advances the story on commentary as well as he does. And on two hundred five live, that's very important. Mm-hmm. And then when that's missing from the equation and no one else comes close to him. Yeah. Close. Yeah. Uh, it really it really doesn't enhance the product whatsoever. It doesn't. Like, I keep on expecting Aiden English to sing during it. Look at Tony Nese. Yeah. He's the champion. Yeah. And then Otunga just yapping away about absolutely nothing. Yeah. I keep on. Where's that drawing that dude did for us of a of a of Otunga as a plant? 
<laughs> I thought it's got to be one of these boxes over yeah, here. Yeah, somewhere. That's ah, so bad. It's somewhere. Anyways, uh, getting back to it. Uh, yeah, Lince Dorado, Grand Metal League, Singh Brothers. Uh, and then, yeah, there was like a really weird botch towards the finish of this match. <laughs> yeah. Where like one of the Singh brothers tried to throw Metal Leak out or something it like that. It didn't work. And then there was a really awkward exchange between a couple of them. But then they, they got it back together where the Singh brothers delivered a super kick mm-hmm. on Grand Metal Leak, I believe. But Lin- Lince pinned Sunil Singh after a shooting star mm-hmm. for us. So uh, after that, we had a backstage segment with Umberto Carrillo. Dale gas, dale gas. And Drake Maverick, we're Drake now of all time. Yeah, after after we've been done with the Drew Gulak, Umberto Carrillo thing for weeks, Drake's like, yeah, maybe stay away from Drew Gulak. Gee, thanks, Where Drake. was that advice a couple weeks ago? Appreciate it, man. Gosh. Yeah. Anyways, Jack Gallagher, who, of course, turned on Drew Gulak to, to keep him from beating up Umberto, says, uh, you know, hey, we didn't have much luck as partners. I haven't been cleared yet. But we have unfinished business. And we're going to be in London in two weeks. uh, And I'll be cleared then. So I'm assuming that just means we're going to get Gallagher versus... Yeah, he says we have unfinished business as opponents. Yeah. 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 So that's cool. That'll be a fun match in in England especially. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, Next, Brian Kendrick was supposed to wrestle somebody. (laughs) Instead, though, uh, Mike Nellis attacks him from behind. But then Akira Tozawa comes out and helps his friend Brian Kendrick... So uh, next week, I think, we're getting a no-DQ match. Yeah, uh, Tozawa and Canellis, that should be great. That'll be good. Maybe Canellis will actually pick up a win. Hope so. Uh, after that, we had a really good Arya Davari promo. He's really good. He's a good promo, man. And this was one of those iPhone promos, and it was really good. Mm-hmm. Because he's number one contender now. He is. Yeah. And he was watching backstage the main With event. his sunglasses on. Oh, yeah. That's a very important touch. Which is great. Like, he not only is he doing the side watching, but he's got the sunglasses, sunglasses on. Yeah. Man. Uh, main event, Drew Gulak taking on Tony Nese. Fun match. Uh, I feel like these two guys know each other so well. They can just Gulak a, day. A fun match in their sleep. Um, there's this great spot where Gulak body slams Tony Nese just right on the apron. Ow. Mm-hmm. Ow. Um, and then uh, Tony Nese goes for a 450. Uh, misses. Gulak locks in the Gulak. Uh, Nice rolls through to try to pin him, but Gulak kicks out. Uh, niece hits his German suplex in the corner, goes for running Nice. Gulak gets up, responds with the lariat. Yeah. But in the end, same sequence. German suplex in the corner, running Nice. Your champion, Tony Nice, is victorious. Yeah. So good for the good physical 20 minute match or so. I totally forgot to put up a stupid thread on these shows. Oh, yeah. Man, I really need Oops. to get more on the ball with that. Well, there's a lot going on. Yeah. There is a lot going on. There is a lot going on. A lot on. of people talking about water heaters here to kick off the Discord chat. Oh, really? Yeah, Cody Miles what's had to the, get a replacement one. A lot of people had to get replacement water heaters. My So my water heater is 17 years old, yeah. which is about two years past like, what it's, it's life supposed expectancy, to be. Right? Yeah. My dad has had his for 30. I don't know why I have to replace mine. And they made things differently back in the day. Yeah, better. Anyways, uh, let's see here. I guess we'll answer whatever questions we might have. Start loading up these questions, Discord. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I guess we'll have to go to pedestrian chat as well. Yeah, I guess. So for, first of all, uh, Matthew Grote, new member. Welcome, Matthew. Oh, welcome, Matthew. Oh, that's right. I forgot to mention that at the head of the show. If you enjoy, if you want, if you're interested in the bonus content that we have to offer, we also post it uh, for YouTube channel members. Mm-hmm. All you got to do is click that join button. It's $5 a month, same yep. as the, yep. the same tier on Patreon. Yep. Get all that bonus content. Indeed, indeed. Uh, Mig, thank you. Uh, Gregory Faella. Faella. Uh, Gunner in TNA was dope. Hope he keeps it going. Yeah. Me too. I like I like Jackson Riker. He yeah. Can keep improving. He's good. He's leather. I like he it. looks legit. Uh, there's some people in, in Discord here uh, uh, typing. Do you want to hit the regular chat? Yeah, yeah. A, a rare surprise for regular chat. Uh, Wayne <laughs> we'll Maker pay says attention Steve to them. needs a productivity evaluation by Larson. Steve's plenty productive. Don't 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 try to pull that Wayne Maker. What is he trying to do? He's I'm like the most trash. productive person there is. Oh, uh, Nikhil says at one point after Gulak gives a Larry at the ref loudly said to Nice, sell, 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 sell. Oh, that's interesting. I didn't hear that. That's funny. Huh, that is interesting. Uh, here we go. Mason in the dark. If Regal were to have one more match... With a tag partner, 
Who would you want him to tag with? Daniel Bryan. Yeah. Is that still Regal's Twitter avatar? I think so. It'd be Daniel Bryan. If it wasn't him, I'd say Cassius Ono. Yeah. They seem to really like each other. Yeah. I know I know Daniel Bryan trained at Shawn Michaels School, but I think he really credits William Regal with yeah. really teaching Matt to wrestle. I think so. That could be really fun. Uh, Tim Spulock getting back to the water heater talk. Uh, he says, I used to do heating, AC, and plumbing. They don't make them like they used to. I would go tankless for a water heater. Yeah, I'm not doing that. I'm just sticking with what I got. Just going to replace what I got. Uh, let's see. Alex C. Which former masked luchador is the most surprisingly handsome? Andrade, Umberto, Oof. or El Hijo del Fantasma? Wow, that's tough. It's Here's the thing. Andrade's a very, very, muy guapo. Very good yeah, looking very guy. Very handsome, yeah. Muy guapo. El Hijo del Fantasma, also muy guapo. Yeah, really handsome dude. Pero Humberto is delicioso. <laughs> Grande guapo. I think guapo means Spanish. <laughs> I think it means uh, handsome. handsome. I think it does. Uh, Chronic Bud Ryan, do you think this Kushida WB stint is NXT only? I don't know. I have a feeling that he probably saw. Yeah, good. <laughs> he probably saw, uh, you know, Nakamura's experience in NXT and on May and he. I would I'd be shocked if, uh, if Kushida doesn't end up on the main roster. Uh, Iconic Bud oh, Ryan. Oh yeah, no, I think I think I think he's gonna be like kind of in the Rey Mysterio mm-hmm. ilk, you know. Mm-hmm. I think he's I think they've got plans for that. Um, Iconic Bud Ryan says most surprising is Doctor Wagner Jr. Another handsome, handsome man. He's a very again muy guapo, pero Humberto, ah, primero. <laughs> Oh, I might give the edge to Andrade. <laughs> really? I think so. Really? Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Oh, man. I don't know. I mean, they've literally made a story about how handsome Umberto is. I know. I know. No, he's a <laughs> handsome guy. I'm not I'm not going to argue that point. Oh, man. <clears throat> uh, Wayne Maker says, Steve, this is my field of expertise. You need an air-sourced heat pump. Combined with a decent solar array. Well, it's already, it's what's done is done. Well, that sounds more like your HVAC system as opposed to your water heater. Uh, and I got a new one of those. They're coming tomorrow morning. It's happening. It's done. <clears throat> Raymond Bostaff has a good point. Dr. Wagner Jr. is a time, tra- is time traveler handsome in any time period. Yeah, no, I agree. He's like, Dr. Wagner Jr. is like grizzled, professorial, handsome. Yeah, yeah. He's got the touch of gray yeah. going on and the beard. Yeah. yeah. He's a good-looking dude as well. Yeah. Adonde vas? Atlantis. <laughs> <laughs> Alberto. <laughs> no, man. He's kind of even, I mean, he's, yeah, he's a bit on the WAPO side, but he's also kind of goofy. Whatever the Spanish... Equivalent to Goofy is. <clears throat> uh, Tim Spulock says, with the tankless, it may save money with endless hot water. I don't need ho- endless hot water. I need I need very specific moments of hot water, and that's pretty much it. Listen, I'm very happy with my current water heater. Uh, the new one I get, because it's, it's newer, is going to be more of an energy saver just because that's how they make things. Yeah. Uh, and it's going to give me exactly what I have now. Which is uh, what yo necesito. All right. <clears throat> All right. <laughs> Alex C says Tim Spulak is paid for by big tankless <laughs> water. <laughs> uh, Joe Horace, what do you guys think of Psycho Clown? Uh, I haven't seen too much of it, but what I've seen I like. Yeah, he's got to lose that gauntlet that spews fire when he goes into the audience. That just seems like a hazard. <laughs> no, he needs to double down on that. Uh, Iconic Bud Ryan, how much would a DeLorean cost for Kushida's entrance at TakeOver? Whoa. I think you can get those. I don't think they're that expensive. They're not that expensive. That expensive because eBay cars. They're kind of piece of shit cars is my understanding. <laughs> like they look awesome. <laughs> yeah. But I don't think they're great automobiles. DeLorean. There you go. I spelled it wrong. Oh, get out of town with that. Nobody's paying. Oh, here nine, we go. $9,000. $9,100. I don't even know that one. That's like busted. Anything up. over, yeah. I mean, these people charging fifty thousand dollars. They're coming. Look at flux. this. This one looks like it was left by somebody who got murdered in the woods. A flux capacitor inside for that price. <laughs> Whoa! They had them in red. 
Well, I had no idea. Oh my god! Wow. No, I like I like the brushed aluminum better. They had it in red though. Whoa. <gasps> they have a black one. That's a toy. It's only one hundred sixty-eight dollars. So is this one. Maybe they're all toys. Maybe the ones of different color are all toys. This one's fourteen. Oh no, that one's forty-three thousand. That can't be. That ain't no toy. Look at this one. It's all busted. This guy looks like he's been back to the future a couple yeah, times. <laughs> he's he's run into some Native Americans a couple times. They shot some arrows at him. <laughs> oh man. Uh, let's see. Oh, Karen here. says he had the DeLorean in the Wrestle Kingdom entrance a few years back. Oh, that's not surprising. I'm not, I'm Okada actually, had a dinosaur. That's yeah, not surprising. No, I'm kind of surprised they they went as all in with the Back to the Future thing for his uh, NXT character. Like I was wondering, just because based on IP or you know intellectual property, they might dial back a little bit. Yeah, yeah. I mean, even Morrow said the word, the phrase Back to the Future. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, I'm I'm assuming that they they cleared it with their lawyers first. Well, it seems as like long NXT, as they don't call him Marty McFly. NXT doesn't really seem to care as much about that as they do on the main roster either, because that's why they changed Ruby Riot's name. Because I guess there's a, a character in a series of kids books named Ruby Riot, and so they had the extra T at the end. So yeah. it wasn't a, a copyright issue or trademark issue. Yeah, I don't know. Um, Mason Wayne and the Maker, oh, sorry. Uh, Wayne Maker says, no, they didn't come in different colors. They only did them in brushed aluminum. Oh, ah, okay. All right. Uh, Mason in the Dark. How are WWE going to disguise the fact that the Glasgow, Glasgow fans will probably not stop dropping the F-bomb constantly? Oh, I hope that's the case. I'll have to dial down the crowd a little bit. I guess so. I hope that's the case. I mean, it's on the network. You're allowed to kind of do whatever you want to do. That's true. Alex, he has a good point. He says, I guess as long as they don't have merchandise based on copyright infringing stuff. Yeah, so they can't have Kushida in Back to the Future font. Uh, so can they debut like a Batman character as long as they don't? Can, mm-hmm. they, can they debut Superman impersonator? There you go. <laughs> there you go. Oh, man. <clears throat> yeah anyways all right well that's good enough for a show all right we have a bonus episode coming up so channel members if you want in on that hit that join button mm-hmm. and then uh of course patrons uh keep an eye on the patreon wall and uh yeah there we go anyways thanks so so much everybody for watching until next time we'll talk to you guys later bye be a part of Going In Raw today at patreon.com forward slash Stephen Larson. Starting at $1 a month, you can enjoy Going In Raw ad-free, gain access to the daily 30-minute Going In Raw post-show, exclusive merchandise, and so much more. Support Going In Raw today. Click the link in the description.